Uh, in this video, let's quickly go through the um, building of um, the uh, ID3 algorithm. So I take the spot data as uh, example. Um, instead of um, because I'm now doing that on a cloud computing environment, so instead of uh, do all the file operations, I just uh, raw because the raw data is simple enough. I just write this out and uh, do some um, pseudo file processing stuff. Um, I um, create a file and I write all the raw join string into the file. So I pretend that I have some raw data like that. And um, uh, from line 20, we start process the data. We will use um, uh, a library that uh, provides us a very similar um, uh, functionalities as uh, the R data frame, and uh, which in a sense um, simulates the operations that we uh, often do in a spreadsheet like Excel. And that uh, library is called pandas. So I import pandas as pd here, and I use pandas to read a data frame, read the CSV file into a data frame. Uh, so let us run this cell and see what we have. So the data frame looks like this. Well, we have um, the attribute slices and our target value in this column. This is pretty much what we want. Uh, also, in, in the next step, let us start building our decision tree. Uh, as uh, in previous models, we would like to make a, a, an object template for the decision tree that is class. class. Tree. Let us just call it a tree. And um, a tree has, um, let's just call it a tree ID3 to distinguish that from other decision trees. So this is uh, the constructor of uh, the tree, which is like uh, what we want to initialize the tree. I <coughs> would like to have the structure of tree as um, uh, a data model and tree nodes that has the structure inside of the tree separate in two templates. So I'd like to have um, member and attribute uh, a field in the tree object is called root that represents the root node of the tree. And in the beginning, that is uh, nothing. There's none. This is uh, like the null pointer in C. There's nothing, no information in this variable. And um, let's clear the screen a little bit. Uh, we will demonstrate the, the, the building procedures of a decision tree as uh, other data models. We call this process as fit a data model to uh, uh, a group of uh, 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 a training data set. So I define a function which is called fit. We have a self and uh, samples. Let's call that samples. Um, because recall that now we have to, to facilitate the, 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 the uh, demonstration, uh, I will use a slightly different interface as other data models. Instead of providing X and Y, I will provide um, the tree model one data frame um, that are samples, but I need to specify which is the class column. So I'd like to tell the uh, tree building that this attribute play is not attribute that you can use to predict that is attribute what you are going to predict, okay? So I call this target. Um, actually, the heavy, uh, <clears throat> the heavy work in, uh, lies in the root, the node building part. So here I just uh, 
invoke the node construction uh, from this entry as an entry point. Soft dot root. This is the node. I will create another object that takes a tree node, and the tree node um, takes samples and the target. Then I will call root make function to make the tree. So that's it. <laughs> now let's create the tree node. This is the main part of, uh, of the algorithm. Plus tree node. So <clears throat> samples. <clears throat> and the target. So what do we need in the node? Uh, firstly, as we discussed in the previous slide here, if we are able to make a decision at a node, then let the node return the decision. So um, it is uh, reasonable to have an attribute just as the decision. But obviously, when we um, start building the node, we don't know the decision, so the decision is now. Okay. And of course, um, we need to save the, the group of, uh, of uh, uh, data samples that has been provided to the node. Um, that is other samples. Of course, this is only needed for the building of the tree. After we have built the tree, um, this, can, this, this record can be eliminated from the memory um, because after building the data model, the training data themselves are no longer needed. Um, also, when we cannot uh, make right immediate decision at this node, we will need to know which attribute uh, we want to split the data samples, uh, and uh, we also maintain the structure of the of the of the of the uh, tree. So, um, which goes which maintains the information in this part? We need to know um, when in this part we need to to know uh, according in this note we are going to look at. Uh, this attribute and uh, uh, make branches of the uh, attribute. So we add another uh, property that is called split attribute. Now it is null. And also importantly, uh, recall that. When we um, have done, when we, when we decide to split the tree according to some attribute, say this is a tree node, um, it has some x and y's, and according to some x attribute, it will uh, generate uh, children, and the children, in these children, these are subgroups of x. Uh, one y one and x two y two. Uh, what is important is those children are also tree node objects. So this at this point we implement the recursive structure of a tree. So <clears throat> we maintain. Um, also a property called children uh, and for now the children is now as well okay <clears throat> in the next let us uh, do the main part of the implementation that is uh, to make mic solve 
uh, let's do some uh, drop the target just to save some typing later samples samples this is a, just a give a short name for the uh, for the long variable name um, <clears throat> first let's implement this logic the logic here uh, that means when now it is trivial to reach some conclusion so I'm going to do um, if the length of the samples I can just type samples is less than one that means uh, it's zero actually I can type zero then this here. Um, at this part if uh, uh, we reach some empty uh, population we should receive re, re, we should return the decision of um, uh, its parent decision because now we have nothing to decide so um, but uh, just for simplicity uh, because this is uh, uh, more or less the trivial uh, 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 no, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's uh, uh, a simple case to deal with so instead of maintaining the parent children structure I will just return a constant value Note, this is not correct this is just to make a point that okay now there's uh, no further processing is needed we just need to return an answer Okay, this is different from the actual logic, uh, the, 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 the specific case we have discussed here. When all y belongs to one class, and the, 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 the implementation here is uh, when there is no y at all. So we can just return the parent decision, the majority of the classes, whatever. Now we implement um, the, the, the condition here. All y belongs to one class else uh, <clears throat> if the length when you when you when you when you calculate the length of something it returns the number of elements in an aggregation sample uh, remember that the target is the name uh, of the column uh, of the samples um, in data frames when you index the, a data frame by the column name it returns you all the values that belongs to that column if the length of um, the target column um, the values unique if that is one then I will return sorry decision Samples. Uh, samples target unique I will extract the item from this one element array need a return here I also need a return here so <clears throat> finally we enter the complex case that is uh, when we need to split the, the population of um, um, this set of samples uh, we are saying here oh sorry I need to stop here so I, I have extracted the one value from the from the from the one element array here by using an index of zero okay now uh, we are entering the branch that we need to calculate um, the we need to calculate the information gain of splitting the population by each of the attribute 
we do this for loop. Okay. So let's us uh, allocate the maximum information gain as zero. Uh, therefore, we will be able to select the maximum information gain here that is um, initialized as zero, and uh, uh, we will for each attribute in the samples case um, by referring to the case that means simple if we do the f dot case it will return us all the names of the columns so the for loop is over this part um, that implements this for loop case we first determine if k is uh, the if a is the target we don't uh, do anything with respect to the target because the target is what we want to predict we do not n don't want to use the information in the target column of course um, then we use con to uh, skip this 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 this, this uh, loop step, <coughs> and then we want to compute the information gain by comparing uh, by comparing the, the the entropy of the y and uh, the weighted entropy uh, of the distribution distribution of y uh, by distribute them according to the values in a. So uh, we will delegate this function, this computation, to an information gain computation function. So here I just uh, just use um, a information gain. Let it to be compute info gain. Uh, let to samples, uh, and I will tell it we according to which. Uh, feature to, 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 to compute and I will uh, tell that the information gains target value uh, target <coughs> is uh, the target attribute is target okay and if the information gain is greater than the current maximum information gain uh, we will update our record Uh, and uh, do the do the do the uh, uh, do the split. Uh, sorry. Uh, record the split attribute. Now we have done the loop. Uh, we can print out some debugging information. By attribute. Okay. <clears throat> uh, and uh, maybe we can also print the information again. Uh, we print uh, two digits of the period uh, the maximum information gain. And now we are going to implement this logic. Uh, we will split the, the attribute uh, using the attribute of A. So to do this, <clears throat> what we will do is this is the x part and this is the target. So, um, however, we want to see if uh, attribute A is uh, here. We will examine uh, different values of attribute A and uh, select this subgroup.
for <coughs> uh, one branch of the child and this subgroup of another branch of the kid, of the children. So that's the plan. Uh, let us initialize our children, children nodes. We make uh, an empty dictionary. A dictionary um, just uh, holds uh, a group of uh, key value pairs. That is make it a very convenient way of uh, storing information. Um, so for all the values in samples uh, self dot uh, split attribute. So that is for all the values in this column all the unique values of this column that means this and this to have um, a concrete example let us say uh, scratch code so say if we are looking at the overlook column oh we do not have an overlook the should be Outlook, sorry. Outlook and its unique values are <coughs> these values. Okay. <coughs> so we take the unique values of this column. For each of the value, uh, let's see, the in, let the index to be samples um, this column. This is a, a a uh, uh, row by row uh, judgment. It selects. It is can be used as the index to select all the rows that contains that uh, has this attribute value to be this way. This value. Mm, so let's see. Children. So now the. Children, we will add one children because we now refer, we, we use this unique value to refer to our children because this children, uh, this uh, children dictionary does not have this value yet. It will create a new, new object in this dictionary and we will use this value as the key. Know that don't be confused about the name of k and the value. The unique value of this data attribute will be used as the k in this dictionary to uh, referring to the specific branch of the tree. Okay. So I will let that to be a new tree node that is the recursive part um, samples index and target I will call the make function of the newly created children and don't worry about uh, tra being trapped into an infinite loop, infinite uh, nested calling, because we have uh, uh, terminate conditions in the beginning of, of this, this uh, uh, make function. Now, uh, let's get up to implement our uh, computation of the 
of the competition of the of the uh, information gain, and uh, we also need to implement the competition of uh, uh, entropy. So that is for the next video.